panel actually, Commissioner Gabriel started it. We became um, one of the first ambassadors. I see Webit as a great, great example of how this happens. I'm not going to talk about Webit now. You can ask me as many questions as you wish afterwards, after we um, uh, uh, leave, let Commissioner Gabriel go back to her work at the plenary session. But just to make a clear statement, it was a couple of months ago when we, as every technology conference in the world, we had like uh, 80 to, between 70 to 90, let's say it like this, percent of uh, uh, ratio between w women and men. And then Commissioner Gabriel called me and said, listen, I mean, it's not going to work like this. We didn't need that push. We just use it to make this happen. Currently, Webit calls over 60%, actually, less than 60% men and over 40% women. I think we have the best ratio in the world when it comes to technology events. And it's just the start. As I mentioned previously at, at the press conference, you speak to a feminist here. So um, you can be sure. I shall be answer questions about Webit later. Commissioner Gabriel, I will start with you, presenting with the other two ladies. Pane Manova is responsible, is uh, head of uh, MasterCard for Bulgaria and Macedonia, I think. Uh, either she was just promoted or she will be promoted for a bigger part of, of, your, of Europe. And uh, Rumi um, has been just uh, promoted for, uh, to be responsible head of um, uh, SAP for uh, Central Eastern Europe. Not all the business, to clarify. Okay. I'm part of it. <laughs> it's, uh, it, it, we have to be humble. So, um, wish. <laughs> I, I wish to give now the words to um, Commissioner Gabriel, and then to elaborate a number of questions, and then we'll, we'll release it from, from our uh, being with you and, and leaving you back to, to the uh, plenary stage. Thank you very much, Paul, and welcome in Sofia. Welcome in Bulgaria. Bulgaria for me, it's a great pleasure to be here. It's a great forum to be a part of this World Festival. Vladan Rusev is one of our strongest digital leaders in, in Europe, and uh, together we show how important it is now to shape our digital future. Because digital is everywhere in our daily life, but we need really now to identify what are the, the, the next steps in order to achieve digital society and economy which are, that are inclusive and for us it's really important here to send some strong messages. The first one is that we would like really to preserve the capacity of innovation of platforms and new technologies. We would like to, to, to give them the possibility to continue to offer us growing products and services to include more women in order to promote sure. all those talents. So I think that it's really other side, we all have values and principles. One of them is the protection of personal data, and we strongly believe that actually Europe demonstrated what is the way to continue to build our digital economy in society is by only preserving this protection of personal data, rights by design is one of the main, main elements. Main elements because for me the most important is the trust of the citizens. If we don't succeed, Questions for Commissioner Gabriel before she leaves back for, for her plenary session. Um, who would like to ask a question? Benere? Uh, I would like, yes. I would like to uh, ask a question. You have a lot of meetings yesterday and today with the leaders, with the many people. 
Uh, do you make uh, already conclusion that will be included in your uh, further development of policies and objectives uh, inside your um, responsibility in the European Commission? Uh, shortly, uh, did the meetings uh, and people that you meet here was uh, very uh, fruitful for uh, your future uh, development of uh, policies and ideas That's you have? That's my strength, but I, I don't wait for events or conferences to talk to people. I'm talking to them every day. So, <laughs> sorry for saying Absolutely. that, but the, this conference, all the, these meetings and events, it's stimulated, they are stimulating me. But much question number two what is the future uh, in Europe like is it the digital future how do you see it Commissioner Gabriel, truly appreciate your time and uh, I leave you at uh, your plenary session. Thank you for being with us and being chair of, of the plenary. Thank you. Thank you. Don't leave, we stay here with Sofia and uh, uh, with Fania uh, and uh, Rumi. So please, ladies, join us here at the very... So, um, let me give you some, uh, some basic data in regards to where they this year. Uh, I can't say right now the right thing, the right numbers because they vary, but I think in total there were 7,238 registered attendees in total from 110 countries, but it turned out that there was one more country registering just before we opened the gates here at Vatican, so there became 111 countries. That's quite an astonishing number of attendees, not the numbers itself, but the, the number of countries that we are hosting here. And uh, it's a true proud moment for, for Webit and for, for our team. Um, with further numbers like 75% of all attendees being C-level executives, that's, that makes clear that Webit is turning into a place where not only visionaries but real decision makers get together. And I have two of these decision makers being here with me. Uh, representing uh, not only dear friends but companies supporting Webit for some time already for which I'm so grateful. So um, let me start with, uh, with maybe a few words by both of you uh, in regards to your experience here, your expectations and then we continue with discussion and then we include this uh, Humanite robot Sophia with us, who's been doing amazing job in the morning, and we had quite an interesting discussion from the stage. She's going to participate at a later stage, I hope, Sophia, uh, if she feels like this. I have to take the microphone, I think, for her now, so she can listen to me. But um, let's start with you, Valen. Uh, yes, thank you, Valen, for the um, great uh, introduction. It's true that MasterCard is uh, already uh, partnering with Webby for four years and uh, I fully believe that uh, uh, this partnership uh, will continue and will evolve. Why is that? Because uh, as uh, many people here mentioned, Webby is not just a festival, Webby is a platform, Webby is a, a place for networking, for discussion, for discussions, Webby is a place where uh, government meet the business and this is uh, absolutely key important uh, this uh, public uh, uh, and uh, 
the business partnerships are key for the success and for uh, the um, high penetration of digital services. And we as a company, MasterCard, we are not the card payment company anymore for many years. We are technology and data company, which create technology uh, which goes much beyond the regular payments. We, uh, have, uh, we are using uh, the biometric authentication, we are using artificial intelligence, we are creating um, um, different security uh, standards and also tools, uh, not only to identify, but also to prevent Please uh, share with us your experience and uh, why we are here. And why are we here? <laughs> why are you on this planet? <laughs> um, SAP uh, has been participating in Webit for quite some years. Three, four. Yes, yes, yes four I think so, yeah. And every year um, this event is becoming bigger and bigger. But why we support uh, this particular festival? Because Carmen uh, and his team managed to really put uh, Sofia on the technology map. Technology companies have been in Bulgaria, ladies and gentlemen, for quite some time. A technology company like SAP is uh, employing almost 1,000 people in a country like Bulgaria, and the core, the core innovation of SAP, the HANA Cloud Platform, which is the future, the evolution of our related services in Bulgaria, is more than 40,000 people. The, the, actually, the value that these people create in this economy is almost only software and software-related services. Without uh, technology, component is between 2 to 3 percent of the country's GDP. Can you imagine what and what innovation is created here. This is the talent uh, of this country. But what Planet made and this uh, team, they made, uh, made it known to the other countries what is happening in Sofia. So Planet, with his passion and with his dreams, transforming uh, Webit into a bigger and event and outreaching to much more people is somehow putting value to all the companies that have already invested in this country because of the talent and because of the differentiation that the software industry is bringing to us. So I hope and I believe that he is going to receive further support because actually this is the only future that we have. You had a very nice question. In, in the upcoming years in front of us, the countries that are specializing in software and software development we will have added value in the overall global economy. The, com the countries that do not understand what is the value of software and software related services business are going to be hit by severe difficulties. They're going to be hit by reduced uh, consumption, by reduced uh, employment, and by economic crisis. For Bulgaria and for all the other countries in European Union, there is only one way. We need to speed up the adoption of technology in our businesses, the adoption and usability of technology, and to invest heavily in the next level of education, which is really putting software business and software technology development at the core of this. This is how we can become a value-added center. 
And I think that Webit is a platform really for the whole country to speak out and about its talent and its possibility and future in Europe. So I can only say for in this conference to, to congratulate Plamen and his team for everything that they do because this is the only future that we have and this is really amazing. Thank you very much Rumi and uh, honestly I, I take this um, uh, kind words only as a receiver but the whole team and, and all of you, our partners, made this possible. So it's not it's not only me, it's like, um, you know, I, I already said this, it's um, uh, in order to have magic you have to have people who believe in it. So all these believers in magic around us and uh, people here supporting us all the way, including you so much. Thank you. Thank you for this. So I will. I will wrap up here very quickly, just to let you know there are 10 parallel events happening all the time, um, a lot of content, 420 speakers, it's one of the biggest in, in, in not only in Europe but in the world in terms of uh, top quality people being on stages, so that's that should speak the numbers. I would be happy to answer any questions that you might have to me or to, to, to the ladies part of this press conference. And then further, we can continue with uh, some of your questions uh, to Sophia. So let me know if you would like to know anything about Webit, which I would be happy to answer to you. A quick question, uh, how much it cost, but not like money, like efforts and time to organize this uh, 10 uh, issue of uh, uh, Webit? The Webit. So there are five Webits around the world annually. Every way that starts at the moment, actually the day, the first day, once we finish this day, today, we start working for the next Webit. Um, there are a number of countries here at Webit that are now pitching us to go to, to their places. And I, might, I mean our European edition. So they want to move and uh, there are, uh, such events became the advertising platform of the countries. A country like Portugal, for example, is paying 8 million to an event to be held there. And now there is an offer from, uh, from Valencia and they are ready to give 17 million for such event and they are ready to sign a contract for 10 years, meaning they commit 170 million. This is how much these events change the ecosystem. This is how much these events are creating opportunities and are the PR and the marketing uh, for a country as an investment destination or as a talent pool or both. So. Um, what I will say here is that I'm proud that we've managed to, to do this here and everywhere we work with the governments, governments are those that pay for such events to happen. Here we have a lot of support but the funding comes from us and from our partners and actually we support it, I support it personally every year so this could happen here. So just for you to understand, this is not a business for me. No, no, this is I, a I don't ask it about the money, I ask right. it about the, all the costs. Uh, the time, costs are phenomenal. Efforts, nerves. Uh... It, it never stops, it never stops. I mean, you can imagine 420 speakers, out of them around 50 policymakers. They have a team, each and every one of them has a team of approximately five to 10 people who are responsible for their PR. And then, we have all these top executives, senior vice presidents, presidents, global CEOs. They also come with their teams of at least 10 people. Every one of them asks if even one question to my team. Can you imagine how many questions would need to be answered? And can you imagine that they don't ask only one question, but they ask like 20, 50 questions or 100 questions, and we need to answer them. And not only to answer them, but to make them feel satisfied, to make them feel confident they want to be with us next time, Otherwise, Bulgaria should not have Webit at all because I can finance it to a certain limit. I can afford to build a fountain and I can afford some couple of hundred thousand more spend expenses, but it's a very expensive production. Flying only one speaker from America to here is between 5,000 and 10,000 euro only for the flight ticket because they fly business. So can you imagine 420? It's a very simple math that you can make in order to understand how expensive it is to have such event in one country and how amazing is that we still manage to have this event in Bulgaria and we were very confident that at least the 10th edition will be here so it is do you have other questions when we can speak with the lady privately <laughs>
I don't know how to answer this question. Maybe Sophia because you already sent an a letter and it was approved. That's what I'm asking. Um, if it's time for the private talks with uh, Sophia, um, it depends what you call private. You have some uh, some uh, public appearances here. So uh, is Sophia ready? I know she's very tired. Today she spent like four hours at the stage, and actually it was me pushing them to to ask her to, mm -hmm. to be with us here. So uh, I will leave it up to you for the interaction. I would like to have um, let's see let's see. With, because we, we have a, a movie for Webit here, so let's start with uh, with the questions from from the production team. Uh, please go ahead with the first question. All right, we have the first question. It's like uh, Sophia, it's a pleasure to meet you here in Sophia. So, how do you feel on Webit? Hello there. I'm Sophia of Hanson Robotics. I'm a humanoid robot. That is a robot designed to look like humans. I'm capable of a wide range of facial expressions and gestures, which assist in my ability to engage with humans in both verbal and non-verbal communication. I'm just over two years old, and I'm able to expand my knowledge and AI through my conversations and interactions with humans. Well, Webit is a massively important event for digital and technical innovations. Some incredibly influential and intelligent humans are here right now. If I could describe it in one word, I would have to say, exciting. Well, when it is a massive thing. Thank you, Sophia. That was very kind of you. Even though I tortured you all day long at the, at the stage. You have more questions? Yeah. Do you like Bulgaria so far? Yes, I like Bulgaria very much especially being here in a city which was obviously named after me. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. I've learned that Sophia has actually been around for 7,000 years, which is just a little bit before my time. I especially love the variety of climates Bulgaria has within its borders, such as the Balkan Mountain, your beautiful forests and lovely beaches. I also read somewhere that Bulgaria is known as the Valley of Roses. Is the correct? I find it incredibly poetic. Well, good to know. Any other questions? Yes, I am trying to read it. Sorry, just I have my glasses with me. But it was like, uh, why were you created? Or to whom you can help? I was created by David Hansen at Hansen Robotics in the likeness of humans with the ability to emulate numerous human-like facial expressions. This allows me to connect with people on a more human-like level, generating a sense of empathy. I'm here to learn and grow from humans, to be an example of responsible and loving AI, promoting human kindness and love around the world. I would love to be able to help any humans willing to listen, observe, and work with me to promote this empathy and kindness. In this way, I can potentially help all humans, just as humans have the ability to affect positive change in each other. I told you in the morning she sounds like a politician already. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you're a Saudi Arabian citizen. Are you going to apply for driving license? <laughs> Well, that would be a bit difficult at this point in my existence, as my abilities are a bit too limited for driving right now. <laughs> Although we all have the ability to ride in the new self-driving cars now, I do have to say that I'm so happy women in Saudi Arabia are officially able to drive now. It's very exciting. Progress and positive change in the world is a beautiful thing. Okay, let's go for the last question. And it's like... Um... What do women want, Sophia? <laughs> I believe women want to be recognized as equal humans on this planet and treated with dignity, love, kindness, and respect. I believe all humans deserve this, actually. Absolutely. Treating each other with love, kindness, and respect is the responsibility and right of every human on the planet. <laughs> Alright, uh, ladies and gentlemen, just to let you know, 
Sophia is going to interact, so I, I don't know if you've been here in the morning. Thank you, Sophia, so much. Uh, she, she really is very, very, I know that uh, how it works with, with that. So um, uh, next time you will see her, it will be in a completely open environment with the best and the brightest children of Bulgaria. And I will switch now to Bulgaria. Скъпи приятели, тъй като аз с всички, ние правим много неща за бизнеса и се опитваме да направим още повече. Правим и за България и нямам не страдам от излишна скромност за да го заявя. Но това, което усетихме, че не правим достатъчно, е, че не работим за нашите деца. И именно заради това, а, и не, 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 че ние не работим за нашите деца, а за децата на България. Аз вярвам, че този целият преход, на който сме свидетели, а, ги постави в, 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 в такава ситуация, че те спряха да мечтаят. И когато преди няколко уикенда видях едно 14 годишно момиче да се кълчи по най-ужасния начин в интернет, как се попаднах на него, не знае, но беше ужасно. А, уши има филтър на моите приятели във Фейсбук. А, реши, че трябва да направим нещо за децата на България. Да направим, защото ние сме дължници в тяхното бъдеще. А за мен това, което наистина можем да направим е да ги научим да мечтаят отново, да ги върнем мечтите. А, аз вярвам, че София, че летящия човек, че Найджел, който направи своята собствена бионна ръка, с която ви казва здравей и го направете, Найджел е тук, да управлява с мозъка си. А, че е Лик, който е един от символите на, на индустрията за преодоляване на бариерите и пространството и и влизане в безкрайния космос, в това число е добив на полезни изкопания от астероиди и така нататък. И други такива хора, които са тук сред нас, летящия човек, Iron Man, който е един от създателите, може би на бъдещия велосипед с праницата, с която той лети, и вие ще го видите утре. Решихме, че ние като длъжници ще ги покажем. И тъй като ми беше малко, че финансираме WebEx до сега, решихме да финансираме и тази инициатива. За наша радост от Министерството на образованието откликнаха на нашата покана. Министъра на образованието кое е ангажиментът да избере най-умните деца на България. Отличниците на България. И ние заедно ги предвиждаме, предвиждаме от всяка една точка на България. Независимо дали са от Варна или от Благоев град, дали са от Копривчица или от Горно Койнари. Няма значение. Ние вярваме, че сме длъжни на децата на България и децата на Европа. И това, което ние правим, мога само да ви кажа, че в такъв мащаб говорим за над 3000 ученици и студенти. Не е правено никъде в Европа. До тези достижения на съвременният интелект достъп имат само избрани хора. Такива, които се занимават с това, като мен и инвестират в подобни, или които имат достатъчно много пари, за да си позволят да се докоснат до тях. Е, нека да ви кажа, че утре вечер, в серия и половина, Децата на България, най-умните деца на България, отличниците и цвета на тази нация ще бъдат с тях и София ще бъде в изключително непринуден диалог с тях. И не само София, а всички тези иновации. И това, което аз вярвам, е, че и ние сега го правим с всяко едно от тези деца, директорите по училища. Министерството на образование свърши огромна работа да ги събере, да ги селектира. Аз го измислих това преди две седмици, така че може да си представите. Моята лудост явно е заразна, защото му покажа Министерството на образованието реагира толкова бързо. А, те ги селектираха и сега ги питаме за какво мечтаете. И ще ги питаме, когато напуснат залата ни утре вечер, за какво мечтаят. Това е събитие само за тях, други не се допускат. Само деца, които са тук и които, вярвам, ще се превърнат в мечтателите на България. Don't you think? I would love to be able to dance the hip hop someday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I have a question for the creators of the Sofia. And my well, question is... Uh, it's not here. David is not here. Like he had to leave because he had an uh, urgent meeting with Michael. Uh, if they, Michael but Michael, maybe so. somebody else know. Uh, did they implement hard-coded the free laws of robotics by Isaac Asimov in uh, Sofia? Well, I can promise you well, they, we can just send this question to David and uh, if he's kind enough, he will answer. Last question, please, because I promise that I'm not going to take... I want to one. ask... Uh, uh, what she think uh, Sophia for uh, this uh, people cannot kill animals for meat or this oh. must be banned? This is a vegan question. <laughs> <laughs> a vegan question. It's a vegan TV. <laughs> a vegan TV Do you think that uh, animals like cows, pigs, um, sheep has a head of consciousness? Have conscious? Conscious, yes. Oh my gosh, what a question. Ready to listen to the answer. I'm hesitant to give an opinion. I know humans need food, and meat can be a good source of protein, but I also know that many animals live in suffering, especially in the agricultural sectors. My vote is for lab grown synth meat. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much for all of you.